Did everybody die? No. Yes. Okay, good. What did the music show? Her? I mean, I, I hope so. All music right. Music is dead. Music dead is dead. Yeah. Children. Uh, Abysme, you should start a podcast asking what killed music uh, instead of creepypasta. Answer is um, everything. Mm. So, who's ready to do a thing? That's it. Y'all ready to get nerdy as fuck over some <laughs> law review articles? <laughs> Y'all ready for this? <laughs> this is somebody walking in with legal papers. <laughs> but yeah. So, apparently... <laughs> Welcome. I guess that's how gonna... it is every time I walk into court. <laughs> Walking into court in his uh, jersey and shorts. But um, walk into it... court like, what up? I got a big cock. <laughs> no, no you, you joke, but people who just file papers for a living, called process servers, that's they they just show up and like whatever the fuck they want, and I'm over there in a goddamn suit. Hmm. <sighs> well, it's a space that suit. Sounds like an abysmy problem. Mm. It it is. It is. It's a humble brag. Boy, I hate looking fly as fuck every time I go into work. Sure, it pisses me. It just sucks looking as good as I do, <laughs> day in, day out. Uh, I want to fill these papers. It's the nerdy upper middle class version of pimping ain't easy. Mm. <laughs> so, I guess are we all recording? Hyper realists number. Uh, you're recording. No. I can't record if we're doing it via Skype. Oh, that's right. You can't. You can't record if you're doing it on Skype. I gotcha. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, Hyperrealists, number 11, episode 11. How are you guys feeling? How are you guys feeling? We passed the 10-episode mark. Not Where many podcasts we... make it that far. Wait, isn't isn't this going to be 12 then? Because we did two last recording sessions? Episode 12. How are you feeling, guys? We passed the 11 mark. Not many podcasts can <laughs> Most... pass that. <laughs> no. And from here on out, the podcast is going to be about our ideas for Overwatch characters. Yes. Mm -hmm. that's, I, what I, I... that's so ridiculous. I don't think we'll ever do that, but... No. Nah, nah. Certainly not in the next episode. Stay tuned. <laughs> and pick up a loot box. But yeah, anyway. So... <laughs> Alright, so everybody here is drunk and or stoned, and we're going to be doing the Hyper Realist episode 12. How did you know I was drinking? <laughs> oh, hi. Oh, it's -a me, the Pope. How you know I'm a Catholic? <laughs> I, I've had a sh like not a, not a bad work week, but a very long and just compacted one. So straight up, one of my coworkers is like, "All right, everyone, we're gonna start drinking now," and everyone just started. It was great. <laughs> Maybe if you don't I wear like, a fucking I like suit. my work weeks. Like I like my poops, long and long compacted. And compacted. Oh, God. <laughs> so this episode of the Hyperrealists, getting back on track, away from the away from the poo humor. Because we'll we'll come back to that, I'm sure. Uh, apparently, well, Abysme... This poop is stinky. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Abysme, <laughs> as our legal expert, our resident legal expert... Uh, Not a was, lawyer. There was a paper published, I believe, by a law student in Florida, uh, mm -hmm. arguing why Slenderman and creepypastas and internet creations as such are all public domain, essentially. Is that correct? It's it's yes and no. Um, it's specifically that Slenderman is a or should be considered public domain, or as this article phrases it, um, internet folklore, right? And therefore cannot be owned. It does not say that all creepypasta is, but any creepypasta that has been made in a similar way that Slenderman has, in that it was a contest and then there was an idea bred from that contest, and then people built off of it with the author's permission and therefore no one owns it. That is the crux of the paper, that internet folklore should be considered open so as to not uh, chill creativity. Yeah, I think I maybe got ahead of myself because one of my concepts or one of my thoughts about this was the slope toward uh, basically everything being internet folklore, <laughs> you know. <laughs> well, and you have a point in which we will discuss, but yes. And DP, I know that uh, you had some opening statements you wanted to make about this. Uh, you said you wrote them all down, and it was you said you had five pages, I think, of mm -hmm. opening statements. So, 
Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, uh, yeah I'll start. Uh, John Madden. John Madden. John Madden. <laughs> John. Uh, so, so we'll get into the crux of the paper uh, that I haven't read and I'm finding out about now. <laughs> but I think that there is uh, there is actually a little bit of validity to this idea, but it it gets really complicated when you talk about ideas of ownership mm. on a free internet. So, for instance, like I love YouTube poop, and I made a YouTube poop about. Um, <laughs> the, these like rum chata commercials where they show you how to mix drinks with rum chata and it's just so great and it's like two hosts and they love rum chata because they're using rum they're selling rum chata right mm-hmm. so they oh my god everything goes good with rum chata just throw rum chata in this and so I make a YouTube poop out of it having a great time and uh, rum chata gets really angry about this <laughs> and puts a strike <laughs> on my channel it's like no, 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 <laughs> uh and so, I think like, we found well, why why doesn't Rum Chata just be like, hey, this person is doing a creative thing, and no one would confuse this with a Rum Chata ad, so let it be. Um, am I in the right, or or am I in the wrong? Should I not have the freedom to uh, use that material to do something new and original that does not replace the original? Well, I think. First and foremost, we found the one thing Rum Chata does not go with, which is poop, I guess. Mm-hmm. So, oh, oh. YouTube poop. Oh, no, it makes me poop pretty heavily. I mean, <laughs> but yeah, I, it's I, good, but damn. That's the question, I think, is between um, making something transformative and you know making something new or making a satire or a spoof versus is Rum Chata uh, available to everyone to use the name and logo and, you know, whatever for whatever they want because it's, you know, a collaborative effort. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> Well, that's that's where this gets tricky because Victor Surge, the guy who made um, Slenderman, made two images, I believe. It was just two images and a very short backstory, mm-hmm. and it got expanded on in such a phenomenal and explosive way that you could hardly say Victor Surge is responsible for Slender Man as he is now. Right. Well, so that's where it gets weird because I believe Victor Surge encouraged people to expound upon his work. He Mm -hmm. said, oh, what you guys are doing with it, it's cool, it's awesome, go for it. Now, one thing this article does not mention, and I'm very surprised that it doesn't, is Lovecraft. Because Lovecraft did the same thing with his stuff. He made it. He made a very loose pantheon of gods or eldritch gods and then said to his friends, yeah, no, have fun with it. And that's why there is such a, despite the fact that it's in public domain, there is such a common place um, situation where people are using his stuff because he said, yeah, I don't care. Now, that does not mean that he didn't own his works at the time because he did. True. And yes. just because of copyright laws... Um, and how different acts were instituted century, um, almost a century later, that's why it's a bit different. Now, Victor Surge, it's, it does get very complicated because it's a character made from a contest. The prompt was not his. However, as this article points out, derivative works are owned by the derivative work makers. So even if you take a public domain concept and make your own work from it, that's yours. Mm. So it gets very, very, very confusing as to who owns what. I'm in the camp that Victor Surge does own his work, but, I mean, we'll just get to that. But that's kind of where I'm coming from. I just want to say that Victor Surge, uh, James Bond villain or American Gladiators uh, gladiator? Oh. Which which would you say? Absolutely both. Oh, okay. All right. WWE, uh, I'm guessing, as well. Victor Surge! No, Victor. No, that doesn't sound like a wrestling. Mortal Kombat character. Hmm. Mortal Kombat character. Um, American Gladiator, and Bond villain for sure. But I don't think that that's really? not a that's not a wrestling name. I don't think. No. Oh, well, I think you are the can, wrestling expert. I am not. We can probably all agree on late night infomercial host. <laughs> yeah. What is right. up, guys? Victor Surge here for the, <laughs> for Mighty Sticky. 
Need something stuck somewhere? But yeah. Um, <laughs> there's, there's, it's a confusing thing because you have Marble Hornets really canonized who uh, Slender Man really is. Hmm. It's like that old thing where um, every so often you'll see some announcement somewhere where they'll say, all these old Popeye comic books are now public domain. And it's like, oh, mm. so Popeye's public domain? And they're like, no, just the comic books. <laughs> it's like, oh, <laughs> well, you know, I mean, so I, I feel like it's one of those mixed type of situations where I would feel like maybe I could possibly get behind the idea of uh, Slender Man as a general concept, a very, very general basic concept, like vampire, zombie, uh, Frankenstein's monster. I could get behind well, the very vague general concept being public domain, like you could make your own Slender Man, your own Slender and Creature people guy. Have. Yeah. People definitely have. There's an episode of Red Letter Media where they say, jokingly in the title, did Red Letter Media invent Slender Man? And they just said, hey, we had a video, a film we did back in 2006 or something where we had a guy in a suit with like a no face um, stalking from the woods. Mm -hmm. And they admitted that this idea is not new right. and it's not very original. Anyone can do it. And that's where the article actually comes in on page 29 uh, in kind of the crux of the argument. It says Slender Man can't be uh, copyrighted because it's uh, he is not a stock character. <laughs> now this is very confusing because it says the Nazgul from uh, from Lord of the Rings. Those are stock characters. They're just weird hooded dark figures. You you know they, they aren't they aren't distinct. And I thought really hmm. so you can just go sell some Nazgul toys right now and yeah, you're not going to get your ass sued. That's ridiculous. Bullshit. It's it's incorrect. Like. It's half right because, yes, stock characters are not, um, they can't be copyrighted, but a stock character is like a superhero, not Superman, well, right. a superhero. Exactly. Can, can you sell a Nazgul thing if you don't call it that? Oh, yeah, I would if assume it, so, yeah. Sure, if it's not called that and it looks different enough, sure, but if it's like, you know, it has the ragged hood and it's clearly got the Lord of the Rings style sword and it's on a weird skeletal horse... You'd be hard pressed to argue, I think, that I'm not just ripping off the Nazgul. Hooded dark figure, sure, but to say that the Nazgul is a stock character, I think, is incorrect. And I think saying Slenderman is a stock character is also incorrect because nowadays, if you show but, Slenderman, but what, people... about, what about the, 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 the Gruberman? Is fucking, he's been around since like Germany, and then <laughs> those Germans. He's been around since Germany. <laughs> Do you have any proof that Hitler wasn't Slender Man? <laughs> hmm, could be. He had facial features, we know that. Are all <laughs> Nazis actually Slender Men? Or are all Slender Men actually Nazis? Tune in next week. Well, even um, uh, the Marvel Hornets guys maintain that theirs is the operator and not... True. And that's a silly distinction that everyone says, fuck you guys, you're wrong, it's Slender Man, what are you talking about? <laughs> Well, so if it's we basically... take their distinction okay. at face value, sorry, I just want to make this mm -hmm. point. If you take their distinction at face value, then that's just an argument that, yes, Slenderman, as made by Victor Surge, is distinct. Because they're like, that's his thing. We're just making a derivative work of it, which, again, would imply that Slenderman is its own entity. That's well, no, my because, argument. But yeah, Because, um, uh, what's his name? Troy, um, Troy Wagner even acknowledged that um, the inspiration was Victor Surge's thing because he like said, actually, I have some old tapes of this and then went off and started making Marble Hornets. Yeah, and um, Lobo is inspired by Deadpool as a back and forth between DC and Marvel, but we're not going to say one's ripping off the other because they are distinct. Granted, they look very different, but that's kind of my point. Are, you mean, um, fucking, what's his name? Uh, Deathstroke? No, Deadpool. Deadpool no, and No, I mean Lobo. Deadpool and Deathstroke. <laughs> Never well, mind. That, Never I'm mind. About yes. Slade. But I know DC was like, oh, Deadpool's ridiculous. So let's make our own, you know, super OP, snarky character. Uh, nerd rage nerd. building. <laughs> That's what I read. Uh, we'll, we'll what move the fuck on. are you talking about? I, th I, I think, uh, did you read this on BuzzFeed? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I read it in a... Oh, God. Who was being interviewed? 
I fucking forget the name. Some bad DC. Is I don't know. Lobo in Deadpool the same person? Mm. Are you 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 are talking about Deathstroke? You know you're talking about Deathstroke. No, right? I know that Deathstroke and Deadpool look alike, but DC making Lobo was a response to Marvel making uh, Deadpool. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, wherever you read that, they need to have their geek cred taken away immediately. Uh, okay. De- yeah, I mean, I Lobo. I know Lobo was made as a response to ultraviolent uh, comics. Yeah. But I, th- I would think it came way before that. I'm not sure. And I don't. I, you know. You might be right. You might be right. That's you know, be, being a comic yeah. geek is you know coming out, and I'm I can't just let it go. Um, but yeah, <laughs> moving on. <laughs> Comic books are dumb and your movies are stupid. Yeah. Oh God, the movies are fucking stupid. By the way, Black <laughs> Panther, as I as I said on Twitter, it's like Loki comes back to Asgard and fights Thor over the arc reactor. You know, like it's the same story over again. But you know, um, oh, anyway, yeah. probably. So back to back to Slenderman. I would say, you know, back when to you important s- things. Yeah, back to important things. When you see is Slenderman uh, the founding father of Wakanda. <laughs> <laughs> Is Slenderman made of uh, vibranium? Maybe. But, is um... Slenderman's suit made of vibranium? <laughs> <laughs> oh, is Slenderman man. black? You know, I think it's about time we had a black Slenderman, to be honest. <laughs> it's 2018, you know? Get with the time. Yeah. Black female Slenderman. <laughs> but, um... LGBT. God damn it. Black, black woman... Overweight Slender Man. <laughs> <laughs> can we can we get Oprah Winfrey to play yes. Slender Man? <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> you just because she's got the face mask on, you just hear constantly. <laughs> it's like no, stop! Slender Man doesn't talk. Oh my god. <laughs> uh. And you get abducted, and you get abducted. <laughs> Chris O'Neill, also known as Oni Plays, please animate Oprah Winfrey as Slenderman. I need mean, yes. this in my life. I, I know that he listens to this <laughs> podcast. Oh, totally. So. <laughs> but yeah, um, <laughs> fucking shit. We're totally, oh. I, I don't know, We may. this may be irrevocably uh, diverted onto a different tangent, but I'll try, I'll try to bring it back. I think that... Um, when you see the costumes for kids where it's like a morph suit Halloween yeah. costume and it says faceless buddy, you know, or whatever the fuck stupid shit they come up with. The faceless diddler. Yeah. Faceless diddler. <laughs> um, I think that, you know, kind of goes to show that if, if Slender Man is not actually just property of Victor Surge, you know, in his original form, then at least, uh, people, have the notion that it is, <laughs> you know, because they're afraid to just say Slenderman costume, yeah. you know. Um, and I should say well, that he sold the rights. There's, of course, there's also but... a degree of like safe than sorry there. It, it's not necessarily yeah. that they would get in trouble. It's that if there is a five percent chance they would get in trouble, mm-hmm. then why not just say Faceless Buddy instead? Faceless Buddy, by the yeah. way, is going to be my new OC. It's it's. Kill. It's like uh, Batman versus Superman. If there's a 1% chance, then we have to treat it as an absolute certainty. (laughs) Now, here is the great mistake that Victor Surge did. He did not... number Two mistakes, actually. Number one, he didn't copyright right away once he found out how popular this thing was getting. Number two... And two was Slender Man. And two was (laughs) Slender Man. Uh, Number three was that he did not protect his IP... Um, zealously and that is something that current case law and just the trigger happy sue happy culture we live in really requires you have to protect your IP because if you let it get out of control and you're on record going saying yeah no go for it that weakens your position so effing much Mm -hmm. and I I have said this to people who have stolen um narrators who have taken my story black rice three times now um they're like why are you doing this like i have to protect my ip if i don't and everyone else just does it then i'm gonna lose it if you don't protect your shit you will lose it it happens all the time and that's kind of an unfortunate situation if you were cool with that kind of stuff but you still want to own it 
<laughs> well, then know. that's what Creative Commons is for. If I had made it CC by SA, there would be no issue. But I'm like, no, this is a personal story. I don't want it just out there. If people want to use it, they need to ask me, and I'll work something out. But, yeah. It's, it's an issue where uh, the, I'm sure there's a lot of cases where companies want to be free and open and maybe a little bit more generous with the way that they interact with fans. I'm, I'm talking particularly with like bigger companies and yeah. people trying to say like make a fan comic book. So like if you're going to make fan art of, you know, let's just say Avatar or something like that, then Nickelodeon doesn't care. But like if you're going to make like a serialized comic, then maybe they might start taking issue mm -hmm. because now you're kind of co-opting their thing and they, they might get mad about that. And maybe the creators of that are cool, and maybe even the Nickelodeon people themselves, but Nickelodeon's lawyers will be like, oh, shit, you guys can't do that. I always think yeah. back about, um, like, going back to the comic book nerd thing, about the idea that you can go to a comic book convention and you can pay someone to give you a sketch of Wolverine, or, you know, you could buy yeah. someone's print of Superman. And, you know, for the most part, you know, people don't give a shit. But there have been cases I've seen where uh, somebody's gone and said, can I get a sketch of, you know, Madman? Or, you know, like an, an independent character, you know, like a small press indie comic that, like, you know, one guy is just doing out of his basement and, you know, publishing. People will go and say, you know, I'm going to do a print of this character. I'm going to, you know, do a sketchbook and sell it with this character in it. And, you know, at that point, people start getting a little bit like, well, you know, you're you really gonna, you know, make a profit off of this guy's comic that he made? You know, like, you know, you're gonna mm -hmm. sell prints of this dude's art, you know, character when, you know, people could actually be buying his comic and his prints, you know? I don't know. So it, it's interesting how it, it really just comes down to people don't want to uh, abide by the rules at some points, and then at some other times they really want to enforce them, because the only difference oh, sure. between buying a print of Superman... And buying a print of, I don't know, as I said, Madman is just the idea of, you know, one is a corporation and one is a guy, you know? <laughs> so. Well, that, that's kind of the issue that I, I think a lot of people have had, and they get confused. They hear copyright, and they're just, they roll their eyes, and they're like, ugh, copyright. <laughs> and, <laughs> and that's because there are all of these giant predatory companies mm -hmm. that enforce their copyright in uh, really draconian ways that is harmful to, you know, public creation. And so you see this on YouTube. You, people want to use, you know, make a review of something and then they're getting attacked uh, for using right. footage that no way replaces uh, seeing yeah. a film or something like that. That's gotten people to the point where they hate copyright but the purpose of copyright isn't to protect the big guy it's more to protect the little guy and that's just been eroded over time to where it's like a protective clause for big companies rather than the small creator and the small creator doesn't have the lawyers and infinite funds to defend their copyrights and that's the frustrating situation that we find ourselves in no, it's really good that you brought that up because this article actually Because I'm just so does, smart. <laughs> you, you just, you're so smart, you're so sexy, and... Go on. I got a, I got a tight pooper. <laughs> got big dick, tight pooper. Uh, so the article <laughs> does pooper, actually... tight dick. <laughs> <laughs> echoes everything you just said of there's an issue now because there have been derivative works of Slenderman for, what, since 2013, 2014? And now Sony has purchased the movie rights to Slenderman. Mm -hmm. The movie is coming out in May, I think, and the Ugh. trailer's been out. So where do all those derivative works rest? Are they protected? Are they not? Will be will people be able to make their own films, um, all of Marble Hornets, after that movie comes out? This It is such a confused property because it's not even certain who owns all of it. I think it is Victor Surge personally, but he mm -hmm. did a shit job of protecting his stuff. So there's a really good argument as to no, dude, you don't. No one owns it at this point. It is in the commons, 
who the fuck knows we will only find out tragically when there's case law and i would hate to see anybody go through that least of all vector search because that's going to be expensive as hell i think if you were to sit down and uh, want to invest your time in a you know pointless cause i think you would <laughs> <laughs> listen to the hyper realists no um Ooh. I think you I think you could sit down and you could technically draw certain lines and say uh Victor Surge's Slenderman in his original post uh didn't have tentacles. These yeah. you know these derivative works later have tentacles. So faceless guy in a suit with tentacles is public domain you know, or, or whatever how you know that's not the right term but you get what I'm saying it's a collaborative yeah. Yeah. uh collaborative creation internet folklore internet folklore you could say nobody Just... knows who gave tentacles to slenderman so that's you know internet folklore you could say slenderman is in the original post he's stalking children uh in marble hornets he has you know proxies that you know go around and do things for him and so on and so forth so proxies not part of the original canon therefore internet folklore not owned by victor surge you know that type of thing i think you could if you took like a scalpel and spent way too much of your life doing it, you know, you could dissect away what belongs to Victor Surge and the company he sold the rights to and Sony, and you could separate away all the things that are not property of those, you know, organizations and that person. Well, I think well, that that's, that's kind of a, that's a legal discussion, mm -hmm. and that's the discussion I ha we're having, I guess. But uh, yeah. there's yeah. also the question of what is ethical and what is reasonable and i think um i i have issues with things like tribes 12 like i don't like it it's a, it's a for those who don't know it's a uh a, a slender man vlog thing and i think that parts of it are just blitheringly stupid you um, know it, it's 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 a shame because the person behind tribes 12 clearly puts in a lot of work into video editing that's and, what I, mm -hmm. that's what i'm getting at yeah, is, even they could though, have just done anything else. <laughs> like even anything though, else. Even though I don't really like that, and I think it kind of deteriorates from the mythos in a way, that person, um, I think their name is Noah, they mm -hmm. care so much about uh, Slender Man, and they've clearly put in the work. And I think that that's a big issue right there, is, is someone trying to make a quick profit or have they put in the sweat equity to say, part of this is is mine. I've carved out my little space of the Slenderverse. The, and um, I think that he has. The swequity, if you will. The swequity. Swagwity. <laughs> Let's get swequity. <laughs> Pick a <laughs> Oh, God. Fucking damn it. <laughs> I mean, you know, this is, and, you know, let me, far be it from me to bring everything back to myself, but... You know, this is what people always talk about with uh, Negative Mickey. Um, <laughs> from Abandoned by Disney, written by Slimies. But, Not um, photo Negative Mickey, but Negative Mickey. He's just an <laughs> asshole. Yeah, he's just like, you, you, you can't do it, kids. Fuck you. Fuck off. Yeah. Look at you with your gimpy leg. You're not going <laughs> to be an athlete. But, um... Photo negative Mickey, you know, people always bring up this thing where they're like, you don't own that, that's owned by Disney, and I'm like, yeah, I know. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. I, I know that I, I, I have no expectation to <laughs> ever <laughs> own Mickey Mouse in any form. <laughs> Again, since you've said this so many times, I'll say it for you. Someone approached you and was like, can I buy the rights to this story? And you're like, I don't own... <laughs> Mickey Mouse, so that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> well, actually, I think uh, I was like, I don't own Mickey Mouse, so that doesn't make any sense, but I'm not going to tell this guy who's going to pay me a bunch of money. I'll just wait and see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll see if he comes through, and then at that point I'll say, uh, so here's here's what I can sell you. Here's what I can't sell you. <laughs> well, and, like... I, I remember reading, because I was researching this for a video you I did. You remember reading once? I <laughs> remember reading once. Long, long time ago. Me too. Uh, I don't do You must have had a harder time than me, though. Yes. With it. Oh, shit. <laughs> uh, I was, I was going to uh, take a video inside of a local Vons uh, grocery store, and I'm like, can I show brands that I don't own on a video publicly? 
And the consensus was, eh, maybe. <laughs> and it went further to, if I read a book and I say, and then Johnny took a big old swig of Coca-Cola, can I do that? And it's like, yeah, because Coca-Cola is just a drink and you're not asserting that you own it. So, but at the same time, if that's like a facet of the front cover, then that's different. So mm. it changes with the medium. If you had sold the rights to Abandoned by Disney, I think, I don't know, I'm not a lawyer, you'd be okay as long as you said, yeah, but you can't say Mickey. You can't say yeah. photonegative Mickey. The rest I, I would have fine. I would have gone through the story and changed every occurrence of Mickey Mouse to Lucky Lemming. Or Disney, yeah. Disneyland yeah. would be Dandyland, and I would have just said, here's here's the changed story. You may buy the rights to this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> And you know, and then and then photo negative Mickey took a big old swig of Coca Cola. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit! This tastes like garbage. Said negative Mickey. I've yeah. got diabetes now. <laughs> oh, oh, no, <laughs> Mickey, roll me on out of bed. Come on. <laughs> Pre-diabetic photo negative Mickey. <laughs> hey, Mick, you want some insulin? <laughs> Oh man! But hey, uh... want to see me with low blood sugar? <laughs> <laughs> want to see my leg come off? Yeah. Um. Anyway, <laughs> well, uh, that's okay. So here's here's an issue. Um, there's a guy named Digibro, and people got on this man for mm-hmm. plugging a website that sells Daki Makaras. Do you know what Daki Makaras are? Some uh, deep shit, I don't know. Doggy like... muggers are like the body pillows. Oh, like, oh yeah. With, like, I, I would have thought they were. On them. I thought I would have thought they were Japanese maracas, but yeah, go ahead. <laughs> so they're they're these body pillows with like, um, sexy, anime women on them and stuff. And they this website was selling ones that had like a bunch of fan art. So it was like, uh, uh characters from different animes as doggy muggers and and blah blah blah. And people got on them first day and like, oh, these aren't officially licensed, which I thought was kind of silly because it was all fan art and it was stuff that the companies wouldn't be making anyway because it's like weird pornographic things. And uh, maybe some of the companies would. But in the case of like fan art where it isn't something you could buy somewhere else, then... I, I didn't see as much of an ethical problem with it because they were getting these artists to make the Dakimakuras, to make, to make the illustrations on them. And that, again, there's this sweat equity there that kind of pulls it apart from what it was. It's now, such legally, a... disagree you're, with that. legally, you're still fucked, but... <laughs> yeah, like you I, said, I, I legally, you're still fucked, that. but yeah. Because, yeah, well, then just make... At that point, if you're a talented artist, just make your own thing. And clearly it's the IP that you are making fan art of that is driving people to purchase the item. And you are depriving the owner of the IP of potential profits. Granted, it's your derivative work, but, you know, that, that's are, the thing with you, fan art. Are you depriving them of potential profits? It's it's their IP. Yes, For it's sure. a derivation, but it's their IP. Sure. And so sure. if they can't but... sell it, then why should you make money off of it? But the company wouldn't sell it either. Doesn't matter. if That's like saying, I'm going to sell your TV for you. Well, yeah, but I wouldn't sell my TV. Yeah, <laughs> I don't care. So you're not doing it, so I'm going to sell your TV for you. Like, it's... it's it, it, Do these big-ass companies always need this money? Probably not, but I think that sets a very unfair precedent of, well, you weren't going to do it, so I'll do it. Which is just... It's not yours to take in that format. Plus, I mean, who's sure. to say? I, I think I think that you're simplifying it when it's a lot more complicated than that. For sure, that they these companies wouldn't do that, and you are stealing from them. The question in my mind is: Are you still creating something that is original? And I would argue that you are creating something original if you have that an skill. original derivative work derivative sure. yeah sure so and it, if you make it's... a remix of a song we would not exist without that original song is that original yes that's not a lot of sweat as you say though 
because it, as it? many hours as you want to put into it, you didn't make the base work. So I, I, th I think at that point you lose a lot of ground of like, well, I put work into this. Yeah, but you didn't make the original thing. Who knows how much work they put into that? If we want to like actually measure who's putting in the most work. Is it, the, the point that I'm trying to get at here is that if, if you actually are passionate about that and you're getting groundswell around you, I do think ethically it makes it different than if um, you are trying to wholesale take something and steal it, you know? Okay, so let's turn the tables. Some little artist makes a thing and then a company sees it and says, quick, make some fan art of that. Put in a lot of work into it. You have a passion, do it. And then start selling it. Is it okay then? No, but then the, the power dynamic is different there, isn't it? But, 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 but the people who made the derivative work are passionate about it. They just got hired by the company. Does it make a difference? Uh, yes, because the company is involved. Because we're talking about them trying to edge in on an independent artist. Here we're so an independent artist art. work have more, basically, more ownership of a work and more clout to make a derivative work than a company who owns one, is what Definitely. you're saying. Absolutely. Okay. So, and this is an ethical argument, so you are entirely um, entitled to that. And I would say that's a very slippery slope, because what if you're a small company? Is it? Who's, <laughs> what if you're a small company who's trying to protect their stuff, and people are making fan art and taking money away from you? What if you're just like a five-person company? Yeah, and yeah. You hired that, artists. That's shitty. That's shitty. But it's okay because someone's passionate about their fan art. If if someone is then edging in on your shit, and then you could you could be like, why didn't you just come to me and talk to me about this beforehand? So like you're taking the attention away from the individual artist. This is going back to the uh, what, what was the name of the superhero you were talking about? Uh, Slime Beast, Madman. Yeah. Like that's it's like why didn't you go to the creator of that and talk to them and work something out with them? Well, why didn't you just tweet at the company? They have. Uh, channels made to talk about this stuff. They have legal departments. Do you think they would be receptive? Oh, yeah. Depends entirely on the company, of course. But a lot are. Some aren't. It depends on where they are and what they do. So it's it's a difficult... It's very it's easy to say, this big company, they can fuck off. They've got all the money. What about a medium-sized company? Well, what about a small company? Well, the medium-sized well, company also really cares and they're like, they're good people. So if you want to make it an ethical argument, then you run into the problem of who is it okay to flip off and rip off, essentially, even if you're very passionate about it. And I think that's very dangerous from an ethical standpoint. Well, let's take a very concrete example of iconoclastic sure. heroes. Um, either Ray or Asuka from Evangelion. There's a lot of fan art made of them, and the original creator hates all that fan art because he's mm -hmm. like, well, it misses the point of what the characters were for, their critiques, and mm -hmm. then universally, that's not what people like about Evangelion. They don't care that they're critiques. To them, they're just waifus, and people... <laughs> he was, it, was, it was the old thing of like, oh, these otakus want really subservient women, so we'll make Rei, who's like the ultra-subservient women, and then they'll see how disgusting and gross it is. And then <laughs> the fans universally were like, no, this is awesome, this is the best. And he's like, no, you're not supposed to say that. So at that point, the fans, I think, li I, I full stock think the fans have more ownership over Rei than the creator does, because he doesn't get it. Doesn't... He he doesn't, he doesn't like get it. an interpretation of his work. I don't think uh, that's the thing is I think his interpretation in the grand scheme of things is very, very small minded. And I think most of the artists who love that character have a better understanding of the character than he does. Well, that's not even inside of ethics. That's just artistic interpretation, which again is very dangerous to be like, well, this person made this thing. But a hundred people were, had a different interpretation, and I agree with their interpretation. Let's, so. let's, let's make this clear, though. Okay. This isn't a hundred people. <laughs> this okay, is what, this whatever is the number, it doesn't matter, because if you can ethically, ethically speaking, write away the rights of a creator because of a majority opinion, then 
all the narrators stealing all the stories are perfectly in the right because their interpretation and their use is fine. And I don't like that as just as a precedent. I think it's I bad. I, I don't think that that's what we're talking about here, though, because those people... I think people... it's related. Not exactly, but it is related. You can't I let think... majority opinion determine ethics and... Um, because like if, if, if that was true, then a bunch of horrible shit that a lot of people have gone along with would be okay. And that's not right. The The... The difference there is that those narrators don't actually care and are trying to take ownership of something that they do not own. Oh, no, no. Trust me. A lot of them have said, I did this because I love the story. Whether or not that's true, whether or not no, that's no, genuine, they, they, you can't they, prove, they say but that. that's what they what, say. They say that when they're confronted. Well, well let, me, sure. let me stop you guys here. Welcome back to Internet Blood Sports. I'm Andy Worski. Uh, um... Let me just, I, I just want to sort of break in and say one thing here. I think, um, what if we look at uh, the Undertale fan base? Oh, God, do we have to? The thing is, I mean, a lot of maybe Undertale fans would have some maybe interesting takes on characters from the game, and they love, they love the game so much, and they love the characters so much, but... If the creator of Undertale, you know, disagreed with, I don't know, the ghost character uh, that's sad all the time. If they disagreed with the ghost character that's sad all the time uh, being on a waifu pillow with, like, uh, semen all over his face or something <laughs> instead of tears, I mean, <laughs> whose side would we be on there? And, that, you know, keeping in mind that, you know... As I said, the fan base really, really fucking loves <laughs> the game. <laughs> you know, obviously, uh, to a very high degree. You know, are are those are they you know more right than the creator? I would just sort of bring in like a different you know because it's it, looking at somebody who doesn't get uh, why their property is good or whatever or why people like certain things about it. You know, that's one thing. But you know, what if maybe the creator does get it? You know, more than uh, the fandom. I don't know. On who's to say? But I, I really wouldn't have an issue with that kind of dakimagura. <laughs> I, th I would think that that's. I, I would say that that's not really cutting into his profits, is it? Well, I mean, you could theoretically. Depends how much is sold? You could theoretically buy a T-shirt with the character on it and wrap it around a pillow. <laughs> well, and then you run into the issue of, well, he only lost $5. Who cares? Mm. He only lost $10. Who cares? He only lost $500 three years from now. Who cares? And again, dangerous precedent as to how much is it okay to steal from somebody. And I think, I think we should go back to the fact that when DP started out, you know, he did, he did make the point of saying legally you're fucked. Oh, but... sure. You know, X, Y, and Z. Sure. So where, it's not, it's not like we're saying. Ethically. Yeah, it's not yeah, like we're saying. That... Oh, this is all perfectly. You know, no. You know, blah, blah, blah. no. Where's the uh, Where's that leave uh, source filmmaker Overwatch porn then? Yeah. <laughs> where Illegal does that as hell, leave? but damn, is it fun? <laughs> but that's the thing. Is Is there something immoral about that? Uh, immoral as in its use. Immoral as in um, they don't own those characters, so they shouldn't be doing that, and. The people who make Overwatch don't want you to be doing that. So, if we're saying again, if from a legal standpoint, no, they should not. From an ethical standpoint, I mean, it's. I tend to err on the side of the owner, because if people really want to do something, they should put in the work to just make their own thing, or they should ask permission. I think it's um, interesting to note that. Uh, Blizzard, I think, if I remember correctly, primarily oh, went after people. Say what? Yeah, they they did not like the Overwatch porn. They shut right, that shit but down. but I'm just they saying, I'm just saying that Blizzard specifically went after uh, people who were using the actual in you know models, like the official models yeah. of the characters. And I could be I could be wrong, and I could be misinformed, but I think that that was the primary thing was using their actual proprietary models, you know, for the pornography, whereas you know, d you know, drawings. I don't think they gave a shit about uh, people making their own models of it. I don't think they, you know, actually did anything about. It. Now they may care, and they may not like it, mm. but I don't. I don't think they actually did anything about it. Now, would that possibly be uh, 
that probably is sort of like an interesting middle ground uh, in that, as long as it's not, <laughs> you know, the actual specific content created is... by the company. It, it, as a middle ground, not necessarily legal, but, you know, maybe something where people could sort of forgive and, you know, sort of look the other way. I don't know. It seems yeah, like they I did think... that. I think that is entirely their legal department going, okay, fan art's fine, but that people are using the source code or the models, which are ours, that can't be done because then it's just going to get out of control and we have to protect our shit. And that's, I think what they most me fear... Assume. I don't know. I think what they most feared, honestly, you know, just and this is just my take on it, which is totally not informed by anything, but what I think they most feared was somebody making an adult Overwatch Overwatch game using the actual models and content. You know, like, I think that yeah. something like that, you know, if there ever was an actual <laughs> game project, then they would have to full-on fucking sue, you know? And it's like, let's just stop right now. Uh, don't mm -hmm. use our models. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> but... Again, we're kind of... Th this is a, a legal discussion that's turned into, like, what, what rights do you have as a... Uh, creator to make derivative work here. Um, I I don't see anything wrong with source filmmaker porn ethically. <laughs> like, well, yeah, I mean ethically, but it's all it all goes back to that thing of you know well, the law we versus. Still, I don't think we got a straight answer from Abysme Is that um, ethically does does an artist have uh, the volition to do that? All right, internet blood sports commence again. Again. <laughs> Like, so the problem with addressing it from an ethical standpoint is that ethics is often subjective. Well, let's, it let's, is take, regional... let's, take, let's take it out of ethics because that's okay. like a that's a divisive word. Well, before we Art, do that, I just want to say, do you have yeah, like, that? Right? Well, okay, artist. Well, okay, from a legal or an ethical standpoint, I can I have to ask <laughs> because I hate to work in those frameworks, but we kind of have to. Uh, I, I would say that as as far as the ethical discussion we're having, we're probably just going to agree to disagree. And it's not going to change much because, I mean, this is a very complicated issue and everyone has their own opinions on it. And we're adults and we can disagree on things despite, you know, hanging in the same circles. Uh, I would say an artist does have the right to lock down works that they don't like because if I could use an example, I would say Wonder Woman. I, I remember seeing um, a bunch of people making a lot of... Um, a lesbian fanfic about Wonder Woman and then that got a lot of traction and someone said oh in the movie uh, she should be a lesbian and someone came out and said look you're not John Marston not John Marston shit William Marston um, I believe his name is you neither didn't one a character. neither one what's no, his I'm, fucking name no I'm Marshall. saying the person speaking is neither one, <laughs> neither one. yeah uh, so like you didn't make it you don't know the original intention you do not know any of that, nor do you have a right to it. You can make your derivative works, that's fine, but you have no decision over what Wonder Woman should be officially. Very similar to um, Star Trek, actually, if I could bring it back to Star Trek. Um, <laughs> Takei, George Takei, who portrayed um, Zulu, is gay. And even he said, look, don't make the character of Zulu gay. That was not Gene Roddenberry's intent. He had no problem with me being gay, but that's his character, so don't just change it because of who I am. And I think that really does speak to the fact that it does lie with the artist because they made it. They put in the time and the work to make something as original as possible, you know, whatever varying degrees you can attribute to that. And everyone's kind of at their mercy because they didn't make that original work. If they want to make their own, go for it. Yeah, but, but, then, if, but then if they say that uh, Farah and uh, Mercy aren't gay together. Then their then Overwatch team is wrong. <laughs> Didn't they <laughs> like, fire like, like one of their writers? By the way, what? I don't think so. Uh, they fired it's somebody because um, I saw something posted up where they were talking about somebody being fired, and someone asked, "Does that mean that all of Overwatch's lore is null and void?" <laughs> oh God, are they pulling a riot? Really? Oh, I Jesus. don't know. Fuck, I hope not. Was that something that Riot Games did? Oh, yeah. They had, like, this lore built up um, back in 2009 to, like, 2012 or 2011, I would say. And then they fired their entire lore team, and they're slowly, horribly rewriting it. And it's <laughs> the most awkward transition, and it's fucking stupid. It's so bad. 
That's I'm, weird. That's um, very weird. Well, I can give you, I think, the most black and white possible example I can think of. Which Way is, to bring race into it. <laughs> yeah. Jesus. Uh, which is Silent Hill. The mm. people who own Silent Hill uh, are in charge of the chronology, and the chronology is dumb, and they're not paying attention to it. Mm. So uh, are you in the right of making, um, let's say, Silent Hill fan art? When the, when the artist, the individual artist, very clearly understand the art better than the people who have the legal right to it. From an ethical or legal standpoint? <laughs> the, we, we already know the legal case. Yeah, I mean, well, okay, that's up to... Okay, what about the people who... The fans who are okay with where Silent Hill is gone? That is, is, there... that is nobody. <laughs> well, okay, but is that their is... interpretation less valid than people who appreciate yes. the first two installments more? From a purely subjective standpoint, like it doesn't fucking matter, and in some respects, it depends who you talk to, and I, that's the good and bad thing about law is that it's like, look, dispense with emotion. Here's the facts. That's good and bad. Trust me, but who cares? I think it doesn't matter. You don't I'll, own it. I'll step in as the tiebreaker, and my decision will go, and I'll say that. Um, <laughs> The moral and legal thing to do is the same thing, which is to uh, make your slender buddy, make your make your waifu pillow that everybody knows is Mercy, but it's called Morsey. <laughs> and there you go. It's legal, it's moral, it's everything in one. <laughs> mm -hmm. Or it's, you know, a... Goose Woman, or whatever you want to call her. Goose Woman. <laughs> well, the, the reason that I'm like, so, uh, what's the term I'm looking for? like? So Direct. desperate to pursue, yeah, desperate to pursue this is that I think where when we figure out wh like where that line is, and I don't think it's a hard line, no. then that becomes easier to discuss why the narration stuff and that kind of stuff is so pernicious because they're kind of using the same framework. And I don't think it's a slippery slope. I think that they like jumped over a giant gulf <laughs> where the fuzzy <laughs> line was sure. and ended up on the other side. Sure. And th there isn't this, uh, I'm defining it as sweat equity. That's what I care about as an artist. And that's where if someone uh, went without my permission, started taking my stories and uh, doing stuff with them, but they really cared, then I would contact them and be like, hey, why didn't you contact me? Uh, <laughs> be like, yeah. okay, yeah. but like, why didn't you talk to me? Um, that I think makes all the difference in the world from someone just coming along and trying to make a quick buck. Yeah, no, I agree with you, but the, the difference is, is that both someone who puts in a lot of work and someone who puts in a little work use the same excuse of, well, I just really like this thing. Mm. And so when you are okay with that as a kind of a starting point, you inevitably run into people who will try to make a quick buck or people who well, don't realize they're e putting e in e zero fucking work. E yes. E either way, that's why the law is there to say, yeah, th it does, both arguments fall under the law uh, of saying, no, this is my work and I'm protecting it. Yeah. The, the the question is, if you are a common sense person, is there a line where you where you go after one person more vociferously than you would another person? And I would say there is definitely a difference. The defense There's a is, difference is the same either way. Uh, the, the defense is the same either way. Oh, I really like this thing. And you could either choose to believe that person or not believe that person. But either way, the legal def the the legal case against them would be equally strong, you know. The the difficulty I have with making such a strong determination on this, even though the line is a bit blurred, is I don't like the prospect of telling other creators how to handle their work, how to enforce their creative rights, um, because different works mean different things to different people, and 
it's just it's just very difficult for me to reconcile well i'm viciously protecting this story not the other one and everyone should act the way i do because if someone victor surge may have been perfectly fine with giving away slenderman so recklessly well, as he it did. seems he did yeah hmm. maybe and maybe he's regretting it now or maybe he's fine that he sold it to sony <laughs> but um I, I just think ethically speaking there's a difficulty in saying what works for me but de facto has to work for everybody no, else no, 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 in no, every no. scenario. I'm not saying that at all. Okay. I am okay. not saying that at all. I mean, it I, just I am, it I'm reminds me very okay. specific. I'm saying that in very specific scenarios, like whatever Konami says about Silent Hill, they can get fucked right off their ass. <laughs> like whatever they're saying is wrong, and they've done so much shitty stuff. Like fuck those people. They they get. No, they <laughs> legal legal ease be damned. They get no seat at the table when it comes to Silent Hill because all they've ever been is a hindrance to it. Um, meanwhile, narrators uh, get no money at the interpretation of creepypasta table because they are using it for a quick buck, and if it didn't exist, there wouldn't be them. So sure. now. Abysme, you might be able to shed some light on this, maybe legally speaking. But I have not a lawyer. He's 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 not a lawyer. Wink, wink. Um, I have to say that. Yeah, he has to say it. But you know, we all know. Um, <laughs> That's exactly what a lawyer would say. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not barred in the state of California. He's barred from the state of California. Um, At all times. But here's the thing. I mean, uh, perhaps I'm wrong, but uh, mm -hmm. maybe you can correct me on this. I've heard of legal cases where and i you know i'd be hard pressed to say what it is because it's over the course of freaking decades but sure. i've heard of legal cases where the rights to a property have been decided in part uh by whether or not the rights holder was doing something productive with it like um you know in terms of something where something is in question or is a bit in question between who the original creator was or so on and so forth you know there i've heard of cases where uh it has been determined who <laughs> you know is the rights holder based on the fact of well this person toured under the band name for you know a decade whereas you mm -hmm. were in it for five minutes at the beginning and you just came up with oh. the name you know like that that type of thing yes so, yes i've actually i've seen that many a time especially in bands actually yeah. that's a very common problem <laughs> Um, yeah, that just, that comes down to, again, what we were talking about of asserting your rights. If you, um, there's a band called Gorgoroth, a uh, Norwegian black metal band, and it's had like a revolving door amount of members. And at one point it had a relatively stable lineup and the original creator um, split with the other guys and then kind of just did a solo thing for a while if I remember correctly, and then the other guys two were like crazy. Mm -hmm. And so it came down to an issue and they lost this, the band, the, the group of people lost this because they said, yeah, well, yes, you two were, but he was Gorgoroth for a number of years. Now that comes down to just the amount of work you put in. If you make up a name and then someone goes and takes the name and tours under it for five years and you don't do a thing with it, there can be an argument made to say, you did not use it right you because um proof of use is a element of trademark for example and copyright um if you don't show that you use this and someone else went out and did it then there is an argument to be made it's not concrete but you do get kind of points if you're out there selling it saying we are this very very firmly and the other guys just off in this basement so yes that that, that can happen it's not black or white but that certainly is an element but you're saying this is probably the best and only way we will get half-life 3 is what you're saying we will get half-life <laughs> 3 when the stars align and bethesda bethesda valve bethesda, uh, <laughs> bethesda, bethesda buys valve That's what happens. when gabe bethesda <laughs> <laughs> well no one is in dispute about who over who owns skyrim because they oh, re-released that motherfucker so many times. Oh man, I it is but so we'll sad to we'll see Bethesda get, go that way. Yeah, we'll never get another real Fallout game ever again. No. Skyrim released on the Pip Boy. But yeah. Speaking of which, I put out a poll on Twitter 
to say, should I just play New Vegas again or buy four and just try it or something else or eat cheese? And Twitter, <laughs> you did not disappoint. You made a complete tie between New Vegas and cheese. So thank you for not giving me a fucking answer. I don't know what to do with my afternoon. <laughs> that's a, no, that's an answer. Yeah. That's an answer. I'm not eating play, cheese play. and playing Vegas at the same time. <laughs> I'm not doing it. Well, do one or the other. Just don't play four. Yeah. That's your, that would be the issue. The issue oh. is that if you played four... <laughs> you'd be wasting my money. You'd be wasting your money. Oh. And your time. Yeah. So and I, your potential to be eating cheese. <laughs> I think we, we probably can dial down this episode. We've had some highs. We've had some lows. Uh, DP and Abysme got into a real fight. You all heard it. Yeah. And... I don't think uh, I don't think there's going to be any future episodes. We're going to be parting ways after this, probably, uh, yeah. due to incredible amounts of internal just, strife. Yeah, erections. internal strife. Oh, erections, erections, yes. And uh, yeah, so do you want to guys? Do you, you want to guys? This condom made big enough for the two. <laughs> <laughs> Not with that hey, attitude. Hey, do you need the extra large condoms? Um, but yeah, so shall we do outro reductions? Subscribe, subscribe to Magnum Cox. <laughs> Magnum Cox. Cockbox! <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, Abysme, how about an out reduction? How about, how about... Oh, hello. My name is Abysme. I have a music channel where I make original songs, except for the Vaporwave, where I plunder phonics the shit out of Windows 95 music. Um... And I've got a channel called Rock Dog Readings. Giant hypocrite. <laughs> giant hypocrite. <laughs> hey, why don't you sign up for Hypocrite Box? What's in it's it? A, it's just a loot box <laughs> instead of Hypocrite Box. <laughs> it's sold by uh, Matt. So I've got a I got a podcast called Raw Dog Readings where I sometimes discuss stuff like we're talking about right now, and we rip off undercooked analysis. I've got a podcast called. Raygun where readers, where we talk about science analysis. fiction. You you admit it. <laughs> oh, I've been myself, I've been Alan, that and since day my, one. Myself, Alan, and David will be suing the shit out of you. <laughs> uh, lawyer up, buddy. I got so many friends. <laughs> oh shit. Um. Uh, well, I, you yeah, didn't go to law just, school in Florida, shit. though, right? No. Because apparently that turns out idiots who think uh, internet folklore is. Florida no, and Louisiana, because Louisiana uses French common law as opposed to the rest of the country, which uses English common law because they're a bunch of freaks. <laughs> Weirdos. So yeah, um, that's the end of your introduction. Now that you've yep. you know started just insulting uh, entire state people. Yeah. So uh, dead palate introduction. The uh, yeah. uh, loot box. <laughs> Hey, want want your stories judged in a timely manner? Try flipping storage user box. <laughs> right, yeah, right. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm Slime Beast, Ooh. aka Tormental. You're on my channel, so who gives a fuck? But yeah, I guess uh, that's it. 